Okay, folks, in this video we're going to talk about the Cuisinart DBM-8 electric burr mill coffee grinder. Um, and we're going to compare it to a standard bladed coffee grinder like most people use. This one works by an entirely different principle called a, a burr mill. It actually doesn't have a blade like a normal coffee grinder. This one has just a rotating blade much like a blender would have that just spins around and grinds the beans. And this definitely gets the job done. It's very cheap and easy to make one of these. All you need is you know, a small piece of metal and a motor. And that's pretty much it. It's very simple, so they're inexpensive. And that's why they're so popular. But these have some advantages, but they're a little more complicated to build. So they're usually more pricey. In fact, they can get quite pricey. This one isn't that bad, though. It's about 50 bucks, I think, right now. Um, and this particular model is one of the most popular on the market at the moment. I it's probably the most popular electric burr mill. Um, so why would you want a burr mill over a standard bladed coffee grinder? Well, people that are really into coffee sometimes make a big deal out of the evenness of the grind and how uniform the particle size is in the grind. Because if you have a lot of small particles and a lot of larger particles, like they're not a uniform size, then when you put them in the hot water, um, the stuff that you're trying to extract from the grinds uh, doesn't come out quite right because the smaller particles get soaked all the way through a lot quicker than the big particles do. So if, if you steep your grinds for a long time, or, or too long, then the, the bitter properties start coming through because the, the chemicals that give coffee its bitter flavor dissolve more slowly than the the particles and the compounds that you want to dissolve. So you don't want to over extract your coffee grinds, but you also on the other hand don't want to under extract. So um, <clears throat> it's kind of like a, a balance that you're trying to strike. And if you have grinds that are all different sizes, then you can't get a proper extraction because you know your finest ground, ground particles will be over extracted and your larger particles will be under extracted. So it's better if you have even particle sizes. And also, the size of particle that you want is going to vary based on what kind of brewer, brewing process you're using. Like if you're using a French press, you want larger grinds than if you're using a drip coffee maker or an espresso machine in particular. Espresso machines, you want a very fine grind. So it all depends. And most coffee grinders have a way to adjust how finely it's ground, that your grinds are done. And this one, for example, there's three settings. There's coarse, fine, and medium. It basically just controls how long the blade spins for. And this one has a much wider variety of settings. Instead of just three settings, coarse, grind, medium, this one has, I don't know, probably like 18 different settings. You can see all the way around here is the coarsest, all the way here is the most fine. And then here would be medium halfway through, and you get, so you have a wide range, so you can fine tune it much uh, to a much higher degree than this one. And also, since this is just a spinning blade, you never know how many times the blade is going to hit a particular piece of coffee. So you're going to have some pieces that are very large and some that are very small. It's very hard to get a uniform grind with something like this. It's, there's an element of chance involved with you know each individual piece, how many times it encounters a blade. Where this uses a whole different process that um, comes out with much e e more even grinds. Okay, let's take a look at how burr mills actually operate. They don't have a spinning blade, as I mentioned. Instead, there's two plates that are spaced closely together. You can just unscrew this top reservoir here. You, you fill this up with your coffee beans, and then it's hollow in here, so the coffee beans come out through here, and then there's this uh, um, flat plate here, somewhat flat. This just got, you know, grinding plates or, or grinding edges on it. And then inside the, the body of the thing, there's a similar plate, but it doesn't have a hole in the middle. And then this one is attached to a motor, so it spins. And then there's a gap on the side that lets the ground coffee come through. So this is more like how a flour or, or corn mill would work if you're grinding grains. So the, the beans come down the middle and then go between these two plates and then as, as the bottom one spins, 
they get pressed between the two plates and ground up. And then only when they're small enough to fit between the gap and the, and the two plates do they make it out uh, of the outside of the plates and come out here into this reservoir. So you'll see as you, as you tighten this down, the plates get farther apart and uh, are closer together as you tighten it. I don't know if you can see it, but you can notice up near the top here, there's the two plates that are separated by a small gap, and as I turn this, they'll get closer and closer together. So that space between the two plates is how fine the grinds are going to be when they come out. You know, obviously, if a, if a particular coffee particle is bigger than that gap, it's not going to be able to squeeze through there. So it's going to stay between the two plates and keep getting ground up until it's small enough to fit through that gap. And then it will come out of the hole and go in this hole and get deposited in here. So everything is well contained and won't spill. And also, even though it doesn't have spinning blades, it has safety features to keep it from coming on if everything's not sealed away. Like there's this button right here that has to be pressed or it won't turn on. So this has to be in place. And then also, <clears throat> there's buttons up here that have to be depressed or else it won't come on as well. So it's pretty much going to be impossible to hurt yourself with this thing. And you know, your standard coffee grinder has a similar safety features because with a spinning blade it's much uh, more dangerous in general. So this one you can see that you activate it by pressing down here and there's a little pin right here that presses this little re recessed button. So there's no way you can press that by accident. Maybe you took like a pencil or something, but there's no way you're going to accidentally turn this thing on when it's, when it's open. So it's got safety features as well. That's pretty typical of most coffee grinders to have some kind of safety feature. But that's how they work on these two particular grinders. Okay, let's take a look. We're going to grind uh, coffee with each of these grinders and then look at the results to see how it comes out. Okay, so for this grinder, you can there's the settings like I mentioned before, coarse, medium, fine, and then there's also settings for how many cups you want to do. 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Um, so we're going to do 4 cup we're going to put it on the 4 cup setting for both of them. This one has a similar setting for uh, 8, 12, 18. And then also, if you want to grind less than 4 cups, um, well, this one uh, also does the same thing where the, this setting basically just controls how long the motor runs. So it's going to control how much is going to come through here. Whereas this one is always going to grind everything that's in the grinder. But in order to get it coarse, medium, or fine for a certain amount of coffee, you know, if you have 12 cups worth of beans in here, you're going to have to grind it longer to get, you know, a finely ground result than if you only have four cups of beans in here. So it's, you know, both of them still control just how long the motor runs based, you know, compared to how many cups you want. So, you know, if you want to do less than four cups, it's easy with this one, even though it's low, slowest setting or lowest setting is four cups because you just put less beans in. With this, it has this big old hopper. You can pour a whole bag of coffee in here, so you don't have to always be fiddling, refilling your grinder every morning. Um, but then if you want to make only two cups or one cup or something, it doesn't have a setting less than four, but it's basically just like an analog slider, even though it's got these clicky spots, so it like locks into four and seven, eight, whatever. Um, if you want to do less than four, you can slide it between four and off, and it will run for a smaller amount of time than if it's all the way on four. So if you put it right in the middle, it's going to be about two cups worth as a result. So anyway, we're going to do everything with four cup settings. And I'm going to use a quarter cup per four cups that we want to grind. <clears throat> um, but first, uh, let's, let's see how much this thing will grind. If it just has a ton of beans in it and we tell it to do four cups, I'm going to see how much coffee it's going to run through. Um, Okay, so yeah, you'll notice this is rocking a little bit. Uh, that's because of the, the bottom here, there's a gap here where you can tuck the cord so it, it has clearance and it won't rock. Um, see there, it's nice and stable. And it also has uh, this kind of cord keeper, so you can wrap up the cord under here as much as you need to, so you don't have a bunch of stray cord if it's on your counter and you just want it to have just enough to reach the plug. You can wind up as much as you need and then just have the cord coming out of the back 
um, with just enough to reach the socket. But uh, one thing I've noticed about this, which probably won't be a problem for most people since they keep them right on their kitchen counter where there's going to be sockets nearby, but this cord is quite short. I mean, it's only like probably less than three feet. So I don't know if that will be an issue for many people, but it's something to keep in mind if you're looking to this grinder. And this one's a little bit longer, but it's pretty short as well. So this grinder's cord is a little bit longer, but it's pretty short, but still significantly longer than the other grinder. And it has a similar thing where there's a, a gap here that you can tuck the cord into. And it's not as obvious, but this one also has a way you can wrap the cord and it will just disappear underneath here. And you can wrap up this whole cord basically in here and it's not going to, you know, run out of room in which to stow the cord. And then you can just, you know, have it come out when it's at the right length to reach your plug. So they both have that feature. Okay, for the first test, let's see how much this DBM-8 will grind if we just tell it to grind four cups and it's got plenty of coffee in here to grind as much as you want. Because one of the nice things about this is you can just fill this sucker right up and not have to worry about it until you're through your entire bag of coffee. Whereas this one, you have to refill it every time you want to use it. And that's how most coffee grinders are. So we'll start off by putting a half a cup of coffee beans up here. They already got it measured out. So these are two quarter cup portions. So that's a half a cup ready to go. Alright, we'll put this lid on here. And now let's see, we'll start out with it right in the middle, say medium. And we're on the four cup setting. And you put this over on four and then when you want it to start, <coughs> you just press this start button and it'll just run. Uh, oh, another thing is if you have it set somewhere and then as it's running after you hit start, you can see how much is coming out. And if you decide that it's made enough and you don't need any more, instead of just like, I mean, you don't just have to like yank the plug out of the wall to stop it. You can just slide this to off and it'll cut off right where it is. So that's another way to make like just the right amount of grounds. All right, so we'll put it on four and we'll just run, let it run as long as it wants to and see what happens. Hopefully a half cup is enough. Actually, you know what, let's just give it a whole cup just to make sure. But. But here we go, we're on medium. This is like the, pretty much the middle setting here. Four cups, all right, go. Okay, so it made about that much. Now one thing you may notice here, and this is something you're going to run into with pretty much any coffee grinder that has a plastic reservoir, is that due to static electricity, a lot of grounds will end up sticking on the sides. But you can just tap it on your countertop and it'll mostly just fall off. Now I'll just measure how much is left in the hopper and that will tell us how much was actually ground. So we started out with a full cup of coffee unground in the hopper, told it to grind four cups worth of grounds, and we ended up with three quarters of a cup left over unground in the hopper afterwards. So that means we ground one quarter cup of beans for our four cups worth, and this is how much it turned out to be. So that comes out to about a tablespoon worth of beans per cup of coffee, which is about what <clears throat> most people will recommend, but your taste may vary. So now that we know this guy grinds about a quarter cup worth of beans for every four cups of coffee you want to do, and I'm just going to do four cups for every remaining test, so I'll just fill this guy up with a bunch of beans so I don't have to keep topping them off, and then I'll put a quarter cup in this guy for every run. I'm not going to go through and grind coffee on all 18 settings. We'll just do it on its coarsest setting, about in the medium, and all the way on its finest setting and then compare that to this one since it's only got three settings anyway and then you can just kind of you know extrapolate about what the other settings are going to look like on this guy. Alright so this one's set on coarse grind four cups. This one is set on its coarsest setting here. Um, four cups. Alright let's fire them up. This one you just press start and you can let go and it'll shut off when it's ready. This one you have to hold down the button until it shuts itself off. If you take your finger off it, it shuts off immediately. So 
So we'll do this guy first. Okay, all done. Now how about this guy? See how things compare. I like to bang this guy out a little bit so you don't have stuff too much stuff stuck to the sides. It makes it easier to pour everything out without having everything left inside the cup afterwards. Remove the lid here and pour him out. Alright, now let's compare. Okay, this one is from our burr mill grinder. Uh, you can see the, the particle size is... Oh, sorry, let's try to focus a little bit. Particle size is pretty even. I mean, there's some smaller pieces, but it's, you know, a few bigger ones, but it's pretty even overall, I'd say, compared to this guy, where everything is much finer, but you can see there's a lot of uh, pieces that just don't match in there. Like there's just some big old chunks that are left behind, and then a lot of it is like practically dust, which is uh, what people like to complain about in the coffee making world. Like see how there's real big pieces, and then there's pretty much everything in between. But you know. If you're not too picky, this is perfectly fine for most people. It just depends on how much of a coffee nerd you are, basically, I think. I'm going to spread it out a little bit and you can see more effectively here. Alright, so that's what they look like on the coarsest grind. So this would be good for something like a French press. Okay, now let's try a medium grind. Okay, let's take a look. All right, so here we have the stuff from the Cuisinart DBM8 burr mill grinder. Pretty even. And over here we have the stuff from the Mr. Coffee blade grinder. Again, you can see there's larger particles and smaller particles. I guess it may be finer overall than our previous test. But it looks pretty similar to the last run to me, actually. But yeah, lots of like real fine dust in there. In fact, I think that might be mostly what it is. Whereas this guy is much more evenly sized. Very easy to see the difference in this case. And much larger overall. Okay, let's try a fine grind now. Notice that ran significantly longer than it did on the course 
grind and even the medium because that's basically how it controls how fine it is. It just runs longer. Whereas this one should take roughly the same amount of time as it did for the other test because, you know, the, the blades are basically just closer together. Let's just see how it works. see what they look like. Here we have the grind from the burr mill grinder. Again it's pretty darn uniform but much smaller than in the previous test. Alright and this one again you can see there's uh, the old boulders and dust problem that you tend to run into with this kind of grinder. There's big old chunks and lots of dust to go along with it and everything in between. But yeah, this one overall is much finer than the last run on average I would say as well. But this is about what you're going to find with a blade grinder versus burr mill. So I've heard people say that this particular burr mill grinder, the Cuisinart DBM8, which I don't know if I mentioned but it is one of the best selling electric burr mill grinders on the market right now so it's very popular but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best one there is I really don't think it is because as burr mill grinders go it's pretty inexpensive um, you can pay well over two hundred dollars for uh, this style of grinder um, but you know most people aren't going to need that level of you know, uniformity in their grind, I guess, that you would get from a grinder like that, and this is going to be more than accurate. But I have heard people say that if you're really into espresso um, and very discerning about your coffee, you may not be entirely happy with this grinder, primarily because it's, even on its finest setting, it doesn't grind as fine as some people would like for espresso. Um, so that may be one thing to take into account if you're really into, you know, high-end espresso. If you're one of those people with like a $500 espresso machine, this may not be the machine for you. But if you just like coffee and want something a little bit better than a blade grinder, then I think this would definitely be something to look at because it's definitely a big step step up from a blade grinder and it's still, uh, you know, pretty inexpensive as these things go. And, uh, you know, it's stainless steel, looks nice on the counter. It's got the reservoir so you don't have to fill it up every time you want to grind. I really like that. And it's got a lot of control over how fine you want your coffee to be. I mean, it's got like, I think it's 18 different settings to play with. So you can really fine tune it. But I think both of these machines are pretty good depending on what you're looking for. Uh, like I said, I believe this one is definitely one of the most popular electric burr grinders on the market right now. Um, and I think it's got a lot going for it, uh, as you've probably seen from this video. Um, but as far as blade grinders go, this one is pretty nice. It's a pretty popular model as well. I don't remember the model number off the top of my head. It's a Mr. Coffee um, something or other. <laughs> I'll, I'll, but I'll figure it out, and I'll put a link down below the video where you can read more about both of these coffee grinders if you're interested and want to learn more. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.